and welcome to Genomi Club, brought to you by Genomi Australia. Today we will be talking about our artistic digitizer software. This software allows you to create your own embroidery designs straight from your computer. You can then easily send them over to your sewing machine and stitch them out. There are a couple of projects on our website. So like normal, you can go to genomi.com.au. And if you look under inspiration, last month, our project of the month was, our accessory of the month was digitizer. And it steps you through creating these little coasters in the hoop. And we also have um, a photo stitch option, which is another um, style of stitching done in the um, digitizer program, which allows you to stitch out photographs on your embroidery machine. So we're going to go over and share our screen so I can actually show you the program and I'll show you a couple of the features that it has and then show you how I would then um, create some designs and then send them over to my embroidery machine and I've got a couple of samples to show you as well. So like normal, if you would like to have any more information or to purchase anything you see today, please go to genomi.com.au and search for your local Genomi store and your um, local stockist will be able to help you out with this or any other information. Thank you. So let's get right into it. So here we have our welcome screen for Digitizer. You will notice a couple of things here. And if you do have Digitizer, your files that are in this middle section could, will be different to mine because this is all recent files. So these are just some things that I've had open um, over the last, the last couple of files that I've had open. So that's in your little recent. So first of all, we're going to start over on our left-hand side of the screen. So um, some of these options obviously are exactly what they say. So we've got create new. That's obviously to create a brand new um, design. Then we've got open, so that would be if you've um, been working on a design and then you want to reopen it to keep working on it, or you may have purchased a design that you're then going to edit or alter or add to. Your browse window is, and we'll look at this in detail a bit later, that is just allowing you to scroll through and actually have a visual view of all your embroidery designs that are on your computer. We then have our default sewing machine and hoop, our default fabric, and my favorite option, which is your help file. Now your help file here, if I click on it, will come up. And this is like an instruction book built into the software. So we have here the, um, it'll open up into your getting started. You can go through and it will talk to you about maintenance, your software key, um, a little tour of the actual workspace um, and a little quick start guide and reference card. So you can work through some of these options here. Um, if you want more information, say you're working with lettering, you can then just expand the lettering section and it'll go through and talk to you. Um, it'll explain to you a few things about how to add text, then how to edit the text. And it's all there in um, straight from the actual software. You don't need to have a separate um, instruction book as such for this. If you did want to print this out, it is, uh, it's like three or 400 pages. So it is quite a large file for those who do want to print it out, but having it here, very easy access. And I will show you once we actually get into the program, you can actually access this from any page that you're on. Um, and then we can just close that down. So the browse option, oh, sorry. And then, yes, so in the middle, we have all our recent files. I can adjust the size of these. So if I have got a lot and I want to see, or if I want to see more detail, I can easily adjust that. Now on the right-hand side here is another option. Sometimes it is, um, sorry, sometimes it might be hidden like this. So there's a little tiny black arrow on the side of your screen. If you click that, that will show up all of the tutorial videos. Now these videos are um, sorted into sections and it's again like an instruction book, but they will step you through each of the videos. So if you look at the getting started one here, the first one we have is the design browser. So they're only two minutes to about half an hour long. Most of them I'm so I think are about four or five minutes. 
So you can then look at, if I wanted to learn about creating a new design, I can then just watch this two minute video and that will actually have step by step showing you what you click on to create a new design. And if I want to save design, again, I just can watch that little video. So you've got options to either look at the instruction book, the help file, or to go through the videos and watch them. The um, browse window, when that opens up, will open up into this sample section. These are all sample designs that you get with the program. So there are, I don't know, Melissa, how many there are. There's a couple of hundred in here, I think. Um, yeah. Different design um, designs. So this is where I think we've taken one of these mm -hmm. flowers for the project and um, stitch them out as the um, little coaster. So you can go through and pick here or you could browse to wherever you have, um, like in your C drive or D drive or wherever you've got design. So if you've purchased designs on the internet, you would just browse over in the left-hand side to wherever you've got those designs stored. And then you can view all of your embroidery designs here in this browser window. If I go back to my welcome screen, this um, top option here over on the left-hand side is my default sewing machine and hoop. So if I double click on that, you'll notice here that we can choose from not only Janome machines, but I might have a different brand of machine or even a cutter, that this software is compatible with most machines that are out there on the market. We're obviously going to choose a Janome machine. And today I have with me a Memorycraft 550E. So I can choose the 550E. This then brings up all the hoops that are available for the 550. I've got my SQ20B hoop on today. So that's my option that I have there now. So now if I go to create a new design, it will show me my SQ20B hoop. And it has a grid system on here. Those grid lines, the default grid lines on here will match the actual grids that are on your plastic template that comes with each hoop. So that way you can utilize those grid lines. Um, you can turn them off as well if you don't want to work with them. And if we go back to my welcome screen, no, we'll go into the browser. I'm going to pick too many designs here. I want to pick, I think we, oh look, it's Christmas is coming up soon. Let's choose a little Christmas tree here. So I can double click on this Christmas tree. So here's the Christmas tree. It's been bought into my SQ20B hoop. And you'll notice on my screen here, there's a couple of key things that we're going to look at. So in the middle, obviously, is the big hoop, which has your embroidery design in it. Over on the left-hand side, now this is, I'm running full version. The, there is also a junior version that has less options down the side, but this is the full version. We've got a selection, obviously, that is so I can select items in my design here. Um, we'll get onto um, some of these other options. Probably the other one is um, the lettering. You can add in text. You can adjust the colors. And when you go into the colors, you do also have options for a whole heap of different brands of thread. So if you have a particular favorite thread that you work with, you can select, you know, your Wonderfill or your Janome thread or, you know, your... Um, so we've got Madeira thread. Um, there's lots of different threads in here. So you can choose your favorite brand of thread and then all your colors will come up in that brand. So with my design here, you'll also notice on the right hand side, we have this option, which is the sequence. At the moment, this is showing me that there is one to 55. So there's 55 steps in this design but they're all grouped together in this one design. I'm going to click on my auto um, sorting button at the top here and turn it to manual. And you'll now notice that my sequence has now split that into all these separate 
little sections. So if I want to choose part of this design, I can either click on it by actually clicking on the shape on the screen, or I could scroll through my sequence manager here and I can click on it from there. So I'm gonna move my little screen out of the way. I've just got another little screen that's popping up on mine. Okay, so when you've actually selected a part of your design, you'll then have a properties option um, on the right hand side and that will tell you what fill and what outline that design has. So if I just zoom in to here. So here's my Christmas tree. And that at the moment has what we would call a step fill. I could give that fill a pattern. So I can scroll through here. We could give it a wavy sort of pattern like that. And that might give your design then more texture. We could choose um, some little circles if you want to give it. So you've got lots of options there for different patterns. We could make it into a satin fill. I think it won't work so much with the Christmas tree, but it gives it an interesting texture. Let's go back to the step fill. I like that. And I think I liked that bit of a wavy. Oh, that one looks pretty cool. So we've got, so we can give the, um, the, the shapes on here, we can give them different fill patterns. I could also give that a outline. So if I go over to outline, we could give it a satin cereal. We can then change its color. So let's change that to a dark green. So you can see there, I have now added this weird funky border on around the outside of my Christmas tree shape. We don't like that. It doesn't look good. Let's go back and turn it off. Or you can change it. We could just make it a running stitch. And you can see there now it's added this running stitch around the outside. So it's very easy to change the different um, properties of each of your shapes that are in your embroidery design. If I didn't like something, so say I don't like this star, I can select it and then I'm just pressing the delete key on my keyboard and I would delete it. So you could get rid of extra designs on there. This one here, a little star on the top, we want to change its color. So let's go in, we can make it into a gold star. So you can fully change this design to how you would like to stitch it out. We can then add in some text. If we choose this, we're going to add in say Merry Christmas. Ah, look, the back of my hoop has now gone red. That has told me now that my stitching here has actually gone outside my hoop. So depending on what it is, I can drag it back into my hoop. And now my the background of my hoop has now gone white again. So that way, the, it's very easy to tell if you've accidentally gone outside your hoop. And obviously, it won't stitch out if you've gone part of your design outside your hoop. With this um, lettering here, I can then put it on an arc. So if I wanted to have it like arc around this Christmas tree. We've got something like that. Let's move it over a little bit so that it's more centered. So there is my, say, Merry Christmas and my tree. If I say wanted to make this quite a large Merry Christmas, what I can do is I can select this whole thing and I could make it really big. This is obviously not going to fit inside that hoop. So either I could change my hoop, so I could go down to my hoop option, change my hoop to the larger hoop. Let's go for our 36. And this would look better if I turned my hoop sideways. Let's see, will it fit? Oh, it won't quite fit in that hoop. Look at that. We could then select everything and make it just a little bit smaller. But if you don't have a hoop that fits, that, that fits in, one of the options you've got is to add a second hoop. 
So I could go in here, add another hoop, another 3060, and there we have added in a second hooping. I can now select my design, move it up, Oops, get that right. So you can now see that that has fitted into those two hoops. So the, the software will automatically cut that design through the middle there to allow you to hoop it up in two hoopings. That's if you wanted to do something that large. You could add in um, different size hoops for the one machine, or you can um, do like I've done two of the same hoop here. Now, what else do we have? This Merry Christmas, let's change the color. We would like this to be in a lovely blue color. Let's zoom in a bit so you can see. So we're going to make it a blue. Then we're going to give it a dark red border. And now if I zoom in on here, you can see that we've got now blue text with this red border running around it. Again, I can go through and select in my properties. I could change this into a different fill. This is one of the fills that we've got is, um, we could choose, there's so many options here to choose. It's just a matter of picking one and you do then get a reasonable um, view of what it looks like on the screen. There's a little Merry Christmas. Say I wanted to add now a shape down the bottom here so that I could um, put someone's name. I wanted to make, say, a Christmas um, present sack for somebody. So I could go down here and select a nice big star. We could make our star have, say, 10 points. Oops, we don't need a second one there. We could then make our star nice and big like this. Now, one of the other fills that I like is this stippling fill. So I've got this lovely star shape here. I could actually add this little stipple fill. Zoom in, you can see, and that is automatically added a stipple. That's quite a fine little stipple. So you can go in and change the density. And we could make that up to, say, let's do a six mil. And you'll notice then that that's opened up that stipple into a wider. So that's a really good one. If you've got an embroidery design, you want to add um, stipple around it. You can utilize the stipple fill. Let's go back to, say, like a three. Oops, we didn't hit enter. There we go. Um, again, I could make it a step fill and give it a pattern. So you've got all those different options there. You could also do it as a crosshatch. We could then add some text in here. So we're gonna do Merry Christmas to Kathy. We can change our text. So you've got all different options for text. You can change what font it is. Depending on whether you've got full or junior, your font options um, for pre-digitized ones, I think you get uh, is it like 30, 20 or 30 pre-digitized in, in junior, and yeah. you get a couple of hundred in full version. Mm -hmm. And then depending on what font you've got on your machine, you do have access to um, some other fonts as well. Um, what you'll find is that when you're in your text section, if I just scroll all the way up, these ones which have got a zigzag, they're your pre-digitized fonts. Then if I scroll down, you'll then have TT, which are true type. And I think there's one other option. I'm not 100% sure what the S stands for, but there, so sometimes some fonts you may have on your computer may not actually display very well. They're generally any of these ones that are um, not a pre-digitized font. But if it's a pre-digitized one, they're perfect. Um, so there we have our Merry Christmas, Kathy, um, little design that I can stitch out. If I want to see how this is actually going to stitch out, I could go into my slow redraw function. 
when this comes through, what that does is it actually shows me my hoop on the screen. Scroll up. Then I can press play and it will start to actually stitch out. I might speed it up. And you can see there it's going to stitch part of this is the bottom hooping. So that's stitching the part of the um, bottom of the Christmas tree. And then it will stitch out the star and my name. So, and then when you do your second hooping, that would stitch out the top of the Christmas tree. So we could go to that one. There it is, stitching out the top of the Christmas tree and the words. So that just gives you an idea. So you can actually see how it's going to stitch out. You've got that as another option. Back here. Now, if I wanted to um, stitch this out, there's two things I need to do. One, I need to be able to send it to my sewing machine. And two, I need to, I want to print out a template so that I can place this properly on my fabric. So what I can do is we can go up to print and we can print out this design. Depending on what printer you have, wait for it to come up. You can choose options. This one at the moment, I've got my page set up as just a standard A4 page. So you can see that one okay. Mm -hmm. It will show up, I've got, it would print out on six pages and it shows me my hooping positioning and my design. And then it's got all the colors and color changes down the bottom. You can turn off and on these properties depending on what you want to print out. If you just want to print a template so you know where to place something, you could do just the um, like an outline of the design. If you want to start putting in like your orientation and your color changes, and I want to see a three B preview. Um, I don't think here, but it's going to start adding in. So you can choose which sections you want to um, print out, and then you would obviously print that out to your printer. The second thing you need to do is you need to be able to send it to your machine. The 550E can either take um, direct cable or USB. We're going to show you how to send it over via USB. So at the top of my screen, I have a to my machine. So I would click on there. We've got the option to cable or USB. Now I have got a blank USB that I've put in and it will come up with my USB driver here and it's just a matter of um, clicking on it and it will say to me the selected drive is going to be prepared for this machine do you want to continue what this is doing is it's going to format my usb stick for me all ready to be able to take designs so i choose yes and that will then format my usb with this embf folder and it's inside that folder where you want to be able to place your designs so we're going to double click on there so I'm inside that folder. I would then call this Xmas number one, whatever you want to name it. Then we would hit export. And it just sent my two designs because we've got the two different hoops over to my USB drive. So I can then click OK. So what we'll do now is we're going to swap over to our other camera and we're going to go through and show you some of the templates that it might print out and some examples. And then I'll go over to our sewing machine and we will um, put it on the machine to show you how we open that up. So if we swap over to this camera, I'll stop my little share. And here we are. So this is the little um, coaster um, pattern that project that was um, last month's accessory month. I believe that um, Katrina has pulled in the flower out of the um, designs and then created the actual in the hoop part of the project, which is the little coaster um, uh, stitches around the outside so that you can actually make that as an in the hoop project. So here we have, I'm going to bring in a template, unless it can zoom out. So this is one of the templates that we've printed out for a multi-hoop design. This particular one has um, was done on the 99 or the S9, similar size, and it's got six different hoopings. So you can see 
the little arrows which are numbered around the hoop and then I can show you the actual finished stitch out which is this there we go so this is we've then made that into a pillow so we've got different still fill patterns we've got some applique we've um, got some pretty flowers that we've changed the stitch direction of the stitches that's one little project that we've done. I think we did that one a couple of years ago, didn't we? Mm -hmm. This is another little template that I'm going to show you. This one is um, another one that we did, which is multi-hooping. And I've actually got here a half stitched out option that I'll put down and then we can show you. So once you print out your template, what you do is you then, um, I normally pierce a little hole in where each of my crosshairs are, and then I would lay that on top of my fabric and then transfer those marks through my fabric, um, through the paper, actually onto the fabric. So if I then lift this off, you'll see that we've got a center line um, marking here. Mm -hmm. And then um, this particular one, we've got, say, like, hoop one, two, three, four, five, six, a different hoop. So each one of these little markings has got the crosshairs for the hoop with the arrow and then what number hoop it is. So when we actually go to hoop this up um, in our um, the actual hoop, we would then use the template on that crosshair and hoop it up. And we just make sure that the arrow that's on our marking is towards the top of our hoop. So like this number six here, my arrow is going up. So I would place it with the top of my hoop up here. Whereas my number five, the arrow is actually pointing off to the side. So when I hoop this up, I need to hoop that up where the top of my hoop is actually sitting sideways to your design. So as long as you follow the different um, directions that a multi-hooping design might have, you will stitch out. Um, perfectly so here is this same one that's been finished and then we've quilted this up and bound it so it's like a little wall hanging so again this has got different fills we've got some cross hatch we've got some applique we've got a floral fill um, oh no that's a net fill this one is a little cross hatch there's the stipple so this one is a is that like a circular array? Rube, yeah. A little um, fill and then circular yep. array. You've got some satin outlines here. So it's got all, it's like a little sampler of all the different sort of fills and patterns that you can have. Here's another little example. This one has got, um, we've made like a jigsaw sort of piece around each of these shapes. And then we've filled them with that stipple fill. And then we've got quite a wide satin for the actual font, which has then got a line, um, a running stitch around the outside of that one. And this one here is quite large, but I'll show you in sections. <laughs> this one's just got a couple of different um, uh, this one's like a growth chart and we actually um, created in here, uh, how many hoopings was it, 10 hoopings yeah. or something? Yeah. Um, so each one of sort of section of these, um, the actual sort of tape measure part of the growth chart we did in, so that was a multi-hooping that we did along the whole width and then we stitched um, each of the animals separately. So some of them, actually I think they've all got applique mm -hmm. and then they've got different either outlines or fills. So a little um, hedgehog down here has got like a, um, real sort of spiky zigzaggy sort of stitch like a feathery type stitch around it around his back and that's to help indicate obviously his little spines that he has and then if I go up to another one say like our little raccoon here he's also got some um, sort of like different fill stitches in his he's got a cross hatch fill and then just normal um, step fill and then obviously the applique for his tummy. Um, I think we've also got there's an owl and a bunny on there as well and we've put um, some more words across the top. This one 
is coming out. Next this year. one will be coming out next year. It's a full nursery um, theme that we've done. Um, it's got a growth chart and some pillows. It's all got a woodland sort of theme. So there's a pillow that looks like a log and there's some little um, pods that you can put things in. Um, there's a quilt. There's, um, trying to think, there's, you know, um, we made these um, a little while ago. There's a mobile, yes. Mm. So a number of either sewing and embroidery um, projects that will be coming out. That's um, one of the um, sections for Create Your World that will be coming out next year. Okay, so what we might do is we're going to swap over to our other camera here for our sewing machine. And I'm going to show you how you would open a design on our one of our machines. So I have my USB stick here, which I'm going to just put in. Uh, you would around the camera. <laughs> I'll get in next. And so I've put my USB stick in my machine. To open a design, you need to be looking for your open file key. It generally looks like a little manila folder with an arrow coming out of it. On some machines, on the 550, it's over on the um, right hand side. Some machines, it's down the bottom. If you just have a look in your menu, in your instruction book, it will, on how to open a design it will show you what key to press and where it is. But it generally is um, the same sort of icon on all of our models, which is the little folder with the arrow coming up out of it. So we would just press on that file, that button. That will then open up into this screen, which will show me a sewing machine and will show me a USB stick. The sewing machine is obviously built-in designs. I'm sorry, not the built-in designs. It's when you've saved a design to your machine they will appear under the sewing machine. We obviously want to open design from my USB stick. So I would just press on the USB stick. Here we have my EMBF folder. That's where I remember I put my designs. So we go on to EMBF. No, I put it out. I didn't go in my design. So I'm okay. going to come up. I've now got down here one of two pages. Okay, I couldn't find my design in my EMBF. This is something we often get phone calls about. Where's my design? It's not in my EMBF folder. If I think back now, I forgot to press on my EMBF folder. So it's actually sitting outside that. I've got two pages here. I can scroll over to my second page and there are my two designs. So you would then just select the one that you want to stitch out first and that design will open and my machine will calibrate into the center position for the hooping. You can then hoop up your fabric and place it into um, your machine and it's ready to stitch out. So there's our little design. So sometimes you may, um, that's probably, yeah, as I said, a very common thing that we get of people calling us saying they're not sure where their design is on their USB stick, is that sometimes it is not sitting in that EMBF folder. But the easiest way to remember is if you put everything in that EMBF folder, then you'll be able to view it on all the Janome models. Okay, so thank you very much for joining us today. I hope that gave you a little bit of an overview of our Artistic Digitizer program. Um, some of you may have been doing our free trial, which is on until the end of the month and trialing it out. So you will be getting um, a little discount code that gives you um, a discount if you then wish to purchase either the full program or if you already have say junior, you can then um, pay an upgrade to upgrade to the full version. So for anybody who is interested in getting their own digitizer program to create their own embroidery designs, you can purchase them through your local Genomi stockist. And all those details are available on our website. So it's genomi.com.au. And thank you very much for joining us for Club this week.